Hi, it's Adam from Zero Friction Cycling. Uh, welcome to the land of low friction for today's fun little topic, which is going to be uh, taking you through um, a pretty important topic on chain ring wear and cassette wear. And that's gonna be linked to your chain wear. And the reason why um, we're gonna to try to cover this off a bit and try to give you a bit of a guide, I guess, on, on how to check whether or not um, things are gonna be okay when you put a new chain onto your existing chain rings or cassette or not, is that, um, Generally, two problems can occur. When you buy a new chain and put that on your bike, if you put it onto worn chain rings or worn cassette, then you can get jumping under power. So you're just, you're just gonna have a really poor mesh between the chain and the, if the cassette teeth are worn or the chain ring teeth are worn. Um, it, they don't play very well, and especially under load, um, at the cassette they can jump, at the chain rings they can jump, they can even jump off. And that can be really bad because um, it's most likely going to happen when you are putting down a lot of power. And I would probably hear of somewhere between five and 10 cases a year of where either a customer or you know, like a racing uh, person that I know out and about, they've put a new chain on to their uh, drivetrain, not realized that their drivetrain was quite worn because they let their other chain um, run too long before they replaced it, which um, I might try to demonstrate a little bit why that will eat out your chain rings and cassettes much more quickly. Um, and people can get caught out by a relatively low number of kilometers if they are using a average lubricant and run the chain a bit long. Pop a new chain on and then they set off and it can happen really, especially under say really high power like a sprint when they're standing up and their weights over the handlebars. If the chain jumps off the chain ring and all of a sudden you've got zero resistance, you, you just tend to collapse down, go over the handlebars and have a hot date with the asphalt and that's really not cool. So broken bones, ribs, things like that. A lot of road rash, really best to be avoided. So, uh, but otherwise it can just be also really annoying uh, where it can often fall down as well as um, somebody's being really quite um, you know, smart and good and getting a, say like a dedicated race chain for a key event um, for a particular year, might be like a you know, big grand fondo or just an important race. And they hammer away through tra uh, training and then they put their race chain on for um, you know, the event day or race day and they haven't checked that everything's okay. And then the whole race, as soon as they put any power down, it's just jumping under power at the cassette and it's, it's an absolute nightmare. So that's sort of problem number one is you can really come unstuck if you put um, a brand new chain onto worn um, bits. And it's a question I get a lot. So probably if I get a hundred emails saying that, you know, one of the new chains that they've purchased, they go to ride and it's just terrible, it's jumping under power. 99 and 100 easily it is simply you know worn cassette and you know and all worn chain rings and once they've been replaced then everything is is golden so the other um, problem though can occur is that sometimes people replace their chain rings and all the especially the cassette when they put a new chain on and they really didn't need to and that's a, a waste of money so if you've been running a really uh, you know high quality lubricant uh, with good maintenance and you haven't let your chain run too long before you've replaced it um, your cassette should easily, um, most of them anyway, should take a second chain no problem, sometimes even a third if they're a really good steel cassette. Um, and so there's no golden rule that when you replace a chain that you should replace a cassette. Um, and so especially if it's a high, high end cassette that costs hundreds of dollars or many hundreds of dollars, that's a pretty big waste of money if you just sort of turf that cassette because you put a new chain on. So knowing whether or not you do need to or not uh, replace your cassette and or chain rings when you put a new chain on, it really helps be able to um, check if, if that's going to be okay. So there, there are, uh, there, I'll sort of be taking you through soon, I guess, how to, how to measure um, cassette and chain ring wear. Now this tends to work best, mostly for Shimano. They've just got a tooth profile, um, especially with their chain rings that makes the measuring pretty easy. They're a sort of fairly square tooth profile. Other chain rings that have a more pointy uh, teeth profile, it's, it's more difficult, it can be done but you need, you'll be basically measuring yourself a start point and then you need to keep track of measuring an end point, whereas the Shimano um, teeth profiles, we've got some pretty sort of easy go, no go uh, wear rate marks. Um, you do need some good calipers. You do need to have, be able to eyeball pretty closely from a, from a you know, point to a point mark because really every sort of 0.1 of a millimeter counts uh, for quite a bit. So you've got to be really sort of spot on with aligning up the tips of the caliper to the right sort of tip points on the teeth. Um, it's one of those things that with practice you get better. So if you practice it a bit, you know, especially when you've got say a new cassette, new chain rings, 
repeat, just, just check, okay, I, I take a measure, what did I get? Close the calipers, come back, check again, do you get the same measure or have you got something completely different? So just to really hone in that, that sort of skill on, on measuring, because it is, it is something that's not, it's not super difficult, but it's just something that practice does help and really, you know, just taking care, steady hands, good eyes, and, uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll get that pretty well nailed. Um, if you can't measure, so before we sort of go into demonstrating um, how we can actually measure how worn the uh, cog teeth are or chain ring teeth may be, um, the golden rule will be like, if you've got a chain, so obviously a chain wear checker is your number one friend, a, a good accurate one. So I, I tend to recommend the Shimano, um, the really catchy name TLC N42 chain wear checker. Um, that one I really like because it's laser cut, it's short and strong, um, and it's, it's just a go, no go, really easy go, no go. I do have an, um, an episode earlier on how to measure chain wear, so check that one out. Uh, just have a yeah, good understanding of how to check chain uh, wear. And really, if you replace your chain, you know, by the time it gets to 0.5 or just before it gets to 0.5 wear, then in most cases, you will always get a second chain through your cassette. Um, and you should get at least four, hopefully five or six chains to um, a chain, set of chain rings. So um, they really shouldn't need to be replaced that often. Whereas if you run a chain too long, you just eat out the chain rings, eat out the cassette, and you just get a massive bill when it comes time to replace your chain. Um, and it's just really wasteful, obviously. The cassettes and chain rings, they take resources to manufacture and, and uh, ship around and package. So make them last and spend your money on other really fun cycling stuff as opposed to just you know wearing through parts that you can easily avoid not wearing through so um yeah but if you hopefully one you have a chain checker and you've been able to check okay i've replaced my chain at about the right point i'm going to put a new chain on everything i think should be okay um, but check it first so every time you put a new chain on um, it really helps i start in the small chain ring and i will start off with just a medium power and then just riding slowly, so I put the front brake on the bike and I start to just carefully stand up, high power, really high torque into that, into the, into the chain. And if it doesn't jump under that really high load, or I've got the front brake on and I'm wrenching on the handlebars, if it doesn't jump under that power, then things are going to be okay. And then I check that in every cog. And um, once you've checked the small ring, if you've got a you know, um, you know, uh, double chain ring bicycle, check the large ring. So just check each cog under high power carefully low speed the front brake on if you can't get it to jump putting as much torque in as you can whilst you've got the front brake on just pedaling on, on your street then you should be very safe um, when you're out cycling and you should also feel that everything is nice and smooth if it's feeling rough um, and it didn't feel rough before then it's it's just a, not a great mesh between new chain and sort of slightly worn part so that can that can sort of be a bit of an idea that it's sort of a bit on the edge and just really double check that that it's not going to jump under power um, and that's, I guess, your sort of main tip there is uh, just don't assume, and especially if you have let a chain run too long. Like if you've got a chain, you've got an accurate chain wear checker and it's at 0.75 or 1.0, really, really be safe because you just don't want to risk, um, you know, things jumping off and you going off, off the bike onto the asphalt. Um, and what you can get away with really, like it, it does vary quite a lot. So um, some of the higher end cassettes especially can be made of like a titanium alloy, um, especially for the larger cogs, and they can be really soft. So they'll, they'll wear very, very quickly and you've got next to no tolerance for running a chain uh, too long. Uh, where the other cassettes can be uh, steel and there's different grades of steel. There's cheap steel, like you've got say with a, a 105 cassette through to tool hardened steel like you've got with an X, uh, X1 SRAM cassette that they are just incredibly hardened against wear. So there's not a sort of golden rule that I run X chain to 0.75 and I got away with it on this cassette um, and you do this sort of 0.75 on a different bike and a different cassette and you definitely may not get away with it at all. So there's no real golden rule as such for, for what you will or won't um, get done but the, the best I guess guide is don't push your chain wear. Uh, your chain is your more consumable part by far, obviously on your drivetrain versus your cassette and chain rings. Always err on replacing the chain early and you'll maximize ensuring that you can get a second, sometimes even a third chain through a cassette. Um, and definitely you should be in the four plus uh, chains per set of chain rings. If you're going through chain rings faster than that, uh, it can happen that like, some chain rings are very soft, but in general, 
you should be getting at least around four. So, uh, and so for most people, if you're getting good chain lifespan, you, like if you're not getting sort of circa 40,000 kilometers out of your chain rings, something may, may sort of have a bit of review, be it lubricant, be it how long you're running your chains, things like that. So uh, that's a bit of a minimum. All right, so we'll sort of um, cut out from here and we'll, I'll move into, we'll sort of zoom in a bit and we'll start to um, demonstrate how you actually measure uh, the wear on your cassette teeth and chain ring teeth. And for the Shimano uh, stuff as well, I guess particularly what sort of values you can use as a bit of a guide as to whether or not things are going to be okay. Um, other rings and cassettes can vary. Cassettes actually stay pretty similar. Most cassettes, regardless of brand, you can normally use the same values. Um, it's pretty rare that you can't. Chain rings though can vary a bit more. The Shimano chain rings are definitely easier than, than some other brands, but you just take a start measure if you've got a different brand and then you'll be okay. So we'll zoom into that. Okay, so um, here we are, to hopefully zoomed in nicely to show you how we're gonna actually measure um, the cassette wear. So now again, yeah, Shimano, this is a Shimano uh, cassette. So now what I need to do is I need to line up the, the tips of the caliper bang on the two tips of, of the teeth. So just pick basically uh, a trailing edge to a leading edge, so the two closest tips. And if I get the caliper pretty much the tips as dead on as I can, so normally we're going to see a check measure basically of pretty much bang on about 9.5 mil. So they should be pretty much 9.5 mil uh, touch over if I just go that there, so 9.55. So normally I'll get 9.5 to 9.55, lining things up dead on tip to tip on a brand new cassette. If I take one that's off my uh, test machine, I can't remember how many kilometers uh, into the test this went, but we can sort of see, if I line up that one tip, we can see that already the tip of that caliper is no longer aligning um, with the, the uh, tip of the other tooth. So if I go to move that now out, so I can see that there's been some wear if I get this lined up tip to tip. So I've pretty much got this at about 9.88. So we'll call it 9.9 .9 mil as opposed to a new measure of sort of 9.5, 9.55. So is 9.9 .9 going to be okay? Um, in general, it, again, everything sort of comes down to a little bit of a it depends. It depends. It's going to depend a little bit on your power. Um, for most decent power cyclists, your go no go point is going to be somewhere around 9.8 mil. Where if you were to put a new chain onto a cog measuring 9.9, .9, it is likely to jump under high power. Uh, if you're not very powerful, if you sort of tend to tootle around the hills at about 150, 200 watts your go no go point might be as, as, as late as 10 mil, but um, you, know, you, you really wouldn't want to then suddenly become really powerful and, uh, and lay into the, that, that cog. Um, so as a general guide for the Shimano um, teeth, you're looking at, for most people, I guess your safe go no go mark is about that 9.8 mil mark. It'll be pretty 50-50 at 9.9, .9, 10 mil, um, for you not having any problems with it jumping under, under higher loads. So especially as you start to put 300, 400 watts down, odds are pretty high that that chain will jump and that is not so much fun. Um, so if I look at now, I'll show you, it's pretty much the same on a chain ring. So I haven't got the new one. Um, as luck would have it uh, in time for filming today, I ran out of new chain rings um, for my test machine. And so here's a worn one but um, I'll be able to demonstrate on my, my time trial bike, the chain ring is uh, very good condition, so that's pretty much not moved from new. But we can sort of see here that similar thing, so I've gone from the tip there to this, basically the, the leading edge tip there. I can sort of see if I go right to that tip, to the highest point of the tip. This one's at a solid sort of, you know, 10.1, um, you know, or at least at around the 10 mil wear mark. So again, that would, be, that would be pretty dangerous to sort of run um, with a new chain without, you know, sort of take, taking a bit of a risk. And you sort of see this is a small chain ring. Now versus a new chain ring, uh, you, you can sort of see the difference even in, in visual wear. Um, so, you know, again, if you sort of measure these, the, the smaller chain rings have a bit of a different tooth profile, but they often come out pretty much, pretty much about the same. So if I sort of bring that one up, 
sort of see it's pretty similar to the uh, to the large ring. So if you're getting anywhere around that mark, then they're clearly worn. Um, so we'll cut to, because I don't have it uh, here, we'll cut to, I'll show you measuring my time trial bike's um, chain ring and you'll see the difference between that chain ring measure and the one that I just measured here, which I can repeat again there. So we've got that pretty much at about, yeah, the, just over 10 mil mark. We'll compare that to what I get when I measure a new uh, Shimano chain ring or near new on my time trial bike. Alrighty, so yeah, just demonstrating the last uh, check measure as I was talking about before. Um, probably didn't have a spare new chain ring for the test machine to, to easily demonstrate on the table. So just scoot over to my time trial bike. Uh, this chain ring's done just under 7,000 kilometers um, and it's, it's pretty well near new. I will never ever wear this chain ring out because I'm on wax and I replace my chains early, which I won't need to replace one on this for years. Um, so if I, I can sort of see there, if I go carefully, I sort of line this up a little bit before, tip to tip, I'm pretty much dead on basically 9.57. So it hasn't really moved hardly from new. Uh, so new, it was basically dead on uh, 9.55. So yeah, um, that, that's pretty much uh, all you need to do. Uh, it is just a matter of being very precise um, don't maybe have the hands of a surgeon, but get that you can still get that tip to tip eyeball lined up uh, pretty well in good lighting. And if you've got a good, nice set of calipers, then you'll get uh, be able to start to get some accurate measures. Now, again, if you don't have, say, Shimano rings where we've got those nice easy values of you know, you sort of basically 9.5, 9.55 um, start measure, and you sort of go no go mark at around 9.8 to 9.9 .9 mil. Um, then you can measure um, different profile uh, chain ring teeth. You're just going to need to obviously get a start measure. Uh, be uh, precise on exactly how you're taking that measure. So if it's a sort of a pointed tooth, exactly what point like are you going to be measuring from, you know, whereabouts on the leading and trailing edges are you going to measure from? You may need to put a scribe mark um, uh, possibly, but yeah, it, it just takes, it's one of those things, it depends on how nerdy you want to get, can be done, uh, but obviously when you're measuring where every 0.1 of a mil really counts, then you need to make sure that you're measuring exactly the same way every time. Otherwise, you're not gonna get measures that are of any use to you. Um, and it, so, yeah, it just so happens that the, the Shimano rings are a nice, easy profile to, uh, to do that. So, yeah, so hopefully uh, between whether or not you go with measuring your chain ring and cassette wear um, or not, or if you're just using, I guess, the initial sort of hints and tips on making sure that you double check that things are safe when you put a new chain onto existing drivetrain parts, um, then, you know, obviously, hopefully that will help you with uh, not getting caught out with a chain that's jumping under power for an important event or getting caught out with going over the handlebars. Um, and yeah, and also not getting caught out with having to, if somebody just at a, at a local bike store tells you that you should replace the cassette every time you put a new chain on, that, that is not a golden rule at all. It really depends how long have you run your chain uh, what type of cassette material and, and so on. So it, it does help to actually know just some basics on how to check, uh, save yourself an accident, save yourself a bunch of money. And yeah, just good to obviously start to grow some knowledge on that because you will wear stuff out as you ride. And so knowing what to look for and what to do, uh, that all starts to really help. Oh yeah, uh, by the way, uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel and other YouTube type things like share with your friends. Uh, so that'll keep you up to date with the latest low friction news and hints and tips. And um, yeah, also put any comments down below and I can uh, try to look at those and uh, take them into account for future episodes.